What's good? What's good? What's good? Trappers, it's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. And welcome to another amazing episode of Trapping Tuesday. Ah oh, man, we got so much to talk about today. We got Jose in the building. Jose got his young queen in the building. We got George in the building. We got Brandon in the building. We got Dave in the building. Gindy in the building. Tootie, turn up a little bit. We got Tootie in the building. Hey, this week gonna be real special. We're gonna talk about Apple being a bank. We're gonna talk about Starbucks being a bank. Social mini, so, social security is diminishing. That alone better get your mind right. Because your grandmother, your mama might might be looking too well if you ain't on point. But I want to start this week off by saying something that's real important. First, you got to like. First, you got to subscribe to the channel. Bring somebody to the channel. Let them know we trapping this week. I'm gonna start by saying this, man. Money with no information is financial suicide. With information, information without the money is preparedness. Because see, most people wanna do it backwards. They wanna get the they wanna get the money and then figure it out as they go. the law of diminishing returns. So what happens is you put the effort in to make the money. You put the effort in to attain the money, but because you don't have what it takes to grow the money, the effort you put in to get the money isn't rewarded. So that effort that you put in, you could have put that up for somewhere else. The law of diminishing return. Are we putting out equally enough to get the same type of reward that coincides with the energy that we put out? We talking about the law of diminishing returns. So what happens is we put the effort in to get the money, but because we don't have the skill set to grow the money, we see the money diminishing. And that ignites a whole different type of trauma because what happens to the person that works hard to get the money and then who doesn't know what to do with the money, they try to hold on to the money. And then we know that everybody that doesn't learn how to grow your money, someone else will grow it for you. But it won't be for you. You won't be the benefactor, the tax man to get it. The bill collector gets it. The credit card gets it. The layaway gets it. The store gets it. Michael Jordan just had $2.2 billion in sales, more than any other shoe out. Michael Jordan been getting it. You got a closet full of J's. You got more J's than you got assets. I mean, you could resell them. saying the law of diminishing returns is what we talking about today information ignites a sense of urgency that urgency must be in alignment with the information and then our ability to act to move the money once we acquire it watch this y'all our inability to act once we have the information watch this word watch this word it oxidizes the law of diminishing returns it combines it the combination of having the information and not being to act be able to act puts us in a situation where 
analysis paralysis. We can't move forward. You put more effort into making the money than you do growing the money, then your overall return on the money, in essence, wasn't worth the energy you put into it. The law of diminishing return. Let's go a little further with that because I want you to understand what I mean when I say this. When you work all those hours overtime and then you look at your paycheck and you then take the paycheck and pay it on the bill, but the bill isn't even a necessity. The bill is some money that you splurged. The law of diminishing returns. Okay, let's go a little further, right? So. I remember working 60, 70 hours a week, but my, my returns wasn't as diminishing because I was living off 30% of my money. What happens when you are working those hours and then all you see is enough money to pay the bills? And then what happens when you say, I need a reprieve, so you go buy something that you don't really need, but it costs you the overtime money to pay it off the law of diminishing return because you had to go out your way to work the overtime hours. You had to put in a little more effort to work the overtime hours. You had to put in a little more effort to work the second job just to pay off something you ain't had no business buying in the first place. We talking about the law of diminishing returns. Mm. That's what we talking about tonight, y'all. Shout out to my brother from Recession Proof. I see you. 500 in the building. Some of the antidotes that we, that we come up with, they rarely alleviate us of the problems and the underlying issues that we have embedded deep within us. The issues of lack. The issue of, 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 of loneliness. Of unworthiness. Mm. We often want the wealth that we truly have not put the work in for. We often want the success that we truly have not studied for. What type of entitlement is that? How do we have the audacity to want that? Listen to me and listen to me well. Success or wealth gain without the proper knowledge and the proper information is financial suicide. That sense of entitlement gradually erodes away your ability to confidently build wealth. I'm talking about confidently building wealth. I'm talking about understanding the predicament we're in. I'm talking about understanding the environment we're in and knowing how to make the right moves. Last week, we talked about delayed gratification. We talked about what? Having patience with strategy. Now's the time. We want to optimize the returns. We want to make the right decisions at the right moment in the right environment. We don't want to work hard for it. We don't want to be the generation that got it out the mud. We don't want to be the generation that made all the sacrifices. And then when the next generation get it, is little return. The next generation get it, they can't grow it. When your children get it, they can't turn it into opportunity. Talking about the law of diminishing returns. Mm. I need you to sit on that for a second. I need you to understand the importance of learning how to maximize the return and not diminish the return. I'm talking about putting ourselves in situations financially that no matter what's going on in the economy, it's a bull market. 
I'm talking about putting ourselves in the situation when they say recession, we like bet, we've been waiting on this. I'm talking about putting ourselves in a situation when they say recession, we say bet, that's another couple million. We say recession, we say bet, that's another generation I take care of. When we say recession, we say bet, we just add it on to our network. When we say recession, we say bet, I'ma just add to my purchasing power. When you say recession, you say bet. Another trust fund, baby. When you say recession, I say bet. We optimizing the return. Ain't talking about diminishing return. I'm talking about I don't care. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm talking about I don't care who the superpower is. I don't care who the number one country is. I want you not even have to worry about that. You know the people that's worrying about that? The people that's broke. You know the people who's scared? The people at the bottom. The people at the top like, bet, we just gonna pivot. Because the assets are still the assets. You running to take your money out the bank. You ain't got $10,000 in the bank. What you running for? The wealthy people like, yeah, bet. My money in J.P. Morgan. They got $3.2 trillion in assets. I'd be all right. Like, I'd be all right. Everybody running to the bank. Everybody hitting me up. Trap, what I should do with my money in the bank? I'm like, I don't know. I'm, my money in Chase. They got $3.2 trillion in assets. I'm good. Stock market crash. I bet my money in the market. I'm good. You got to change your mindset. You got to change your attitude. We're talking about the law of diminishing returns. We talking about understanding how to navigate. Tonight gonna be a night where we talk about how to navigate. You see what's going on, it's in front of your face. What you gonna do about it? It's in front of your face. Are you gonna disguise your, 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 uh, your, your being scared as patience? Are you gonna disguise your inability to have discipline as patience? Yeah, you, you ain't got no discipline. You don't know how to save to invest. You won't spend every dollar you got. You look at the stock market and you you the one in the comments, in the comments saying, the people, the market about to crash. So what, let it, I'm gonna triple my net worth. Bet, that's what I wanted to do. The dollar ain't worth nothing, bet, but these assets are. We're talking about the law of diminishing returns, man. To that run the beat. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. Tonight gonna be one of them nights, y'all. Tonight we gonna change some things around. Tonight we gonna switch the agenda. We gonna talk about a few things that hurt, though. Like, I gotta give you the harsh truth tonight. But you know it's out of love. You know it's because I love you. You know it's because I want to see you succeed. I want to see you win. I want to see you prosperous. I want to see you building wealth. I want you to be the one to put the blueprint together. So it ain't gonna always be peaches and cream. I gotta get in your face sometime. I gotta help you realize that you ain't really playing a game how it's supposed to be playing. You playing by somebody else's blueprint and the blueprint that somebody else gave us is a losing blueprint. I gotta show you that game. I gotta show you that you ain't really playing it right. It's all right if you don't like me sometimes. It's all right sometimes you gonna say, man, I ain't messing with trap. You be back, you, I get it. Sometimes friends don't talk for a couple days. That's tough love. As long as you know I'm doing it with good intentions. As long as you know you doing, I'm doing it because I love you. As long as you know I'm doing it because I know what you're capable of. As long
long as you know that I believe in you financially more than you believe in yourself financially. It's okay. I'm big bro. I'm big homie. It's all right. I ain't doing it for the fame. I'm doing it for the love. I ain't doing it for the money. I'm doing it for the wealth. Not the wealth of me, but the wealth of us as a collective. It's a difference. I'm leading from the front and the back. Turn up a little bit, 2A. 30 seconds. I like it. That's one of the one. It's nasty. I'm just trying to tell y'all, ain't a doper show on the block. I'm trying to tell y'all, it ain't a doper show on the block. I don't care who it is. Ain't nobody give you this much flavor. Ain't nobody give you this much game. Ain't nobody give you this much love. I don't care who it is. Tell them getting their feelings. We don't care. Big trap. Ease it down, Tootie, ease it down. Ooh! Hey, man. What's good, what's good, what's good, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Welcome to episode 39 of Trapping Tuesdays, man. Listen, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Most importantly, make sure you download the audio on all podcast platforms. Listen, before we even get into it, everybody come here, come have a seat, come have, welcome home. Listen, our goal each and every week is to help you build legacy, help you increase your investing confidence so that you are the last generation that get it out the mud so that everybody after you can get it up out the market, man. Let's clap for that. All right, all right, all right, all right, man. Y'all know how we start every week off. Jose, bro, we 18 minutes in. Yo, we at like 14. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I like it tonight. So listen, man, y'all know how we start off, man. Today we rocking the olive green. We rocking the olive green. Wall Street looks like us now. Hoodie, jogger set. We gonna, do we got a link for that? Let's drop the link for that, man. We have some little chili day. We got the t-shirts in there too, man. So if you want to get your apparel, definitely, definitely, George is ready to take your order and ship that thing out to you, man. Shout out to George for that. All right, man, y'all know how we go, man. If you're new here, man, we got a mantra. We live by this. We die by this. We definitely build wealth by this. It is the certified Wall Street Trapper mantra. Let's go, man. I am a certified Wall Street trapper. I am confident in my ability to make great investments. The stock market is a machine that prints money, and I am more than capable of operating that machine. Not only will I free myself, but my family will eat for a lifetime based on the information that I apply today. I'm a money maker and a wealth builder. Today, I break all the chains that anchor me to the poverty mindset. Let's just stop right there. I will break all the chains that anchor me to the poverty mindset. I will break all the chains that anchor me to the poverty mindset. I will break all the chains that anchor me to the poverty mindset. I will break all the chains that anchor me to the poverty mindset. God dang. My ancestors will smile now because I turned my last name into an asset. My family's purchasing power will increase indefinitely. Today, I make the declaration that no longer will I buy a slave to money. I'll say that again. Today, I make the declaration that no longer will I be a slave to money. No longer will the generations behind me inherit lack. No longer will the generations behind me submit to selling time for money. I am a first generation millionaire. I am the architect of my family's legacy. I am a certified Wall Street trapper and Wall Street looks like us now. Ooh, let's go to that. 
I don't know. I was feeling that. Like I, it was something in me that said today I break the chains that anchored me to a poverty mindset. I don't know when I said it. It was like I saw this visual. Like I saw a visual of me or somebody trying to move forward, but they mindset holding them back. I saw somebody that was dying, striving, eager to build wealth, but their mindset kept holding them back. I saw today, like, somebody like, Trap, I got $20,000. I got $30,000. I got $40,000. I got $5,000. I got my income tax, Trap, but my mindset is keeping me from investing in the market like I should. Trap, I want to build wealth. Trap, I want to be successful. Trap, I want to change my family dynamic. But my mindset, Trap, is keeping me from going to the next level, Trap. Help me. So when I read that, something in my mind, I think I just needed to repeat it so that somebody can get it and, and, let, and lay hold of it. Somebody needs to lay, somebody needs to just lay hold of that and like, like get it and, and I don't know. I just felt it. So if it was you, bet. So watch this, man, right quick. Everybody, if you are on this Instagram live, listen, I love you. I appreciate you. But you do me more on this YouTube tonight. So this is what I need you to do. You just go to YouTube and you just type in Trapping Tools. When you come over here, I need you to say, we here, Trap. I need you to say it in the comments so I can see you. Right now, they got about 1,600 of us in here, and we only 22 minutes in. It's going to be that type of night. This is 25, 26. This is 2,700 people time tonight. You hear me? Let's go, man. I love y'all. When y'all get over here, say, I'm here, Trap. YouTube, Trapping Tuesdays, the Wall Street Looks Like Us Now Network. Go to YouTube, Trapping Tuesdays, the Wall Street look like us now network. When you get in the live, say we here, Trap. Let's go. If you don't have a YouTube account, you need to get one. All right, let's go, y'all. All right, man. Oh, y'all here? Okay. Okay, they here. Shout out to Tori. We see you in the building, queen. We see you, we see you, we see you. All right, man. Let's go, man. All right, so the S&P 500 was up today. That was pretty good. The Dow Jones and the NASDAQ were only down by 0.01%. So before I get it, I want to look at the heat check right quick. Let's go to the heat check right quick. So today we had 3,669,000. 759 calls, and we had 3,379,241 puts. So we actually had a pretty bullish day today where the put call ratio was at 0.92. Now, I'm interested in looking at this because... All right, let's go to the next one, Dave. I'm interested in looking at this for a few reasons. Erica, Nicole, I see you. Thank you so much. I'm interested in looking at this because, so let me say this. Let me say this. Inside of the trap triple beam team and inside of the master of the triple beam, I got out of my NVIDIA position because I had an idea that I got out of that 160, 167. I said, yo, if it gets to 155, I'll get back in. This was an option trade, right? It got down to 261. I said, I got it. It shot back up. The last, over the last three days, it shot back up to 279 at the high. So I'm not mad at that. But I, will, I do think it'll give me another opportunity. Um, but as we look at this today, I want y'all to understand something. We understand how the market is responding, right? So today we see NVIDIA up, Apple up almost a percent. We're going to talk about this today. J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. We're going to definitely talk about those today. 
We're also going to talk about Johnson & Johnson. We're going to talk about Exxon Mobil. We're going to talk about Chevron. Like, we're going to really get it in today. And I want us to talk about this because I think we are truly at a pivotal point right now in our economic cycle. And I'm going to tell you why I think we're at a pivotal point. I think we're at such a pivotal point, first and foremost, make sure y'all like. So if y'all in here, let's like it, let's like it, let's get the likes up. Let's get 1,000 likes up before 30 minutes. Let's get 1,000 likes up before 30 minutes. I think we're truly at a pivotal space right now in the economy. Here's why. Because there's only a couple technology stocks that's leading the way. So that tells us that other industries, other sectors are truly benefiting from this market. Now, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. We will 100% get a pullback. I think the pullback will take us to around, I think we ended the day at 4170, 90 something, 4179. I think the pullback will take us to around 3900. Jose, mark my word on this. I think the pullback will take us to somewhere around 3900. which will still give us a huge upside. I think we will get a pullback over the next maybe three weeks, and it'll bring us into the 3,900 territory. I think after we get into the 3,900 territory, okay, oh, I'm about to skip something right now. Dave, I want you to get me to the recession, not portfolio, there's a graph where we're talking about recession. It's two of them. It's in waves. It's like where we are right now, something like that. You see it? Not that one. It looked like uh, go a little further. Uh-uh. It should be like some waves. It like where it say, where are we now? There we go, Dave. There we go, Dave. I won't really get into it right quick. I won't get into it early. I want to get into it early. So watch this. Watch this. Here's what I feel. Here's what I feel. If we looking, if we looking, you'll see we are right here. We in full recession mode. All right, I'm gonna go to the whiteboard. Dave, keep that on the, keep that on, keep that on the screen right there, Dave. Keep that on the screen. So what I want them to do is I want you to understand and see that there's a part on that where it says technology and discretionary. Right. So if you're looking at technology and discretionary, that's showing you in the bottom of the recession what's actually performing right now. Right. What's performing right now. Now, if you go to full recovery, you'll see what blooms in full recovery. Right. In full recovery, you see that's the top of the market. At the top of the market in full recovery, you see consumer staples and you see healthcare is what truly blooms up there. Now watch this. In that early recession, so it's not there yet, you'll see finance. So now I want, I'm giving you a blueprint on how to navigate this, but now I'm going to show y'all something on the whiteboard that I want y'all to see. Don't keep them there, Dave. Keep them on it. Full recession. I'm going to put ER, or early recession. I'm going to put um, F, F, R, E, C, full recovery. And then E, R. I hold up, Dave. I want y'all to see me. Technology. And discretionary. And then I want you to see communication services and industrials. And then I want you to see materials and energy. And then consumer staples and healthcare. And then real estate, financials, and utilities. All right, come to me, Dave. All right, so here's what I want y'all to see right here. Right? Here's what I want you to see. You locked in on me, Dave? 
All right, cool. Here's what I want y'all to see. And I want y'all to understand something. And we're going to get into something right quick. Once you see and understand this, you can now understand how we pivot. So here's how we're going to pivot. Watch this, y'all. I'm help. This is game changing right here. This is game changing right here. So in the full recession, if you took the Wall Street Trapping course, I really broke it down to a science. In the full recession, we understand that technology and discretionary win. So discretionary is your Nikes, your Starbucks, discretionary. All right? They're going to win here. They're going to win here because even, right, and then as we go over to early recovery, this is the part that's cool. Now, understand that the recession also means what? Bottom. Now you understand in the cycles that we're going to go through. We're going to understand the cycles that we got to go through. And I want us to be able to maneuver, pivot. Remember, I always tell y'all, you don't got to get it right. I just need you to be in what? Position. Say it in the chat. I don't need you to be right. We need you to be in what? I need to say it in the chat. I don't need you to be right. I just need you to be in position. I just need you to be in position. All right, let's go a little further. So, trap. Think about this, y'all. Early recession. Watch this. This is about to be so good. This is about to be so good. This is about to be so good. If you've been rocking with me from Trap and Susie since the beginning, last year the recession portfolio and my option plays were positioned around what? Tell me in the chat. Last year, if you've been rocking with Trap, the option plays and the recession portfolio was positioned around what type of stocks? What type of companies were I in? What type of companies were I in? Last year, in the recession portfolio, what type of company was I in? We were in real estate. I mean, uh, we were in utilities. Utilities happen when? Early recession, bear market. I'm about to give you the science right here. I'm about to give you the science right here. That's how you pivot easily. Watch it. Early recession. Early recession. Trap was in what? Energy. Trap was in energy. What do we say right here? Early recession and bear market. Where are we? You. Utilities, energy. I went with energy. I went with TPL. I went with Exxon Mobil. I went with Chevron. I went with XLE. We made a killing. We made a killing. Why? We understood where to be at in certain economic cycles. We talked about aerial space as well. So check this out. Now, Full on recession right now. No matter what the TV talking about, we understand, man, we in a full on recession right now. We in a bottom. Watch this. Mid February. Mid February. What Trap said? It's time to pivot. It's time to pivot. Mid-February, we got into the, I said, listen, January, we're going to pay what, we're going to see what the market doing. Mid-February, six weeks in, we say, yo, it's time to pivot. We're going to get off the energy stocks and we're going to pivot. Where do we pivot to? We pivoted to what? Watch this. Watch this. We went NVIDIA. 
we went XLK, we went Facebook. But where else we went in a portfolio? We went Crocs. We also still held on to what? Real estate, TPH. Because the full early recession lingered into it. We lingered into it. So watch this. We can ride this out as long as we see signs of this. We may not be at the bottom, but we still here. We not in early recovery mode yet. We still in the recession. Why? Because the things that make up a recession are still in play. Earnings recession. What is that trap? Two quarters in a row we see companies doing what? Miss earnings growth declining. We still got a debt, a, a, a debt ceiling that we looking at. We still there. Inflation is coming down, but it's still what? High trap. What is that? Recessionary environment. I don't got to leave that environment. I can still make money here. Remember, I don't need you to always be right. I just need you to be in position. Because if you're in position, you can under, it's easy. Watch this. It's easy for me to go from here to here. It's easy for me to go from here to here. It's easy for me to go from right to make a small turn. George is about eight feet away from me. It's he not in position. He not in position. He not in, it's harder for George to go from where he at behind the camera to get to the whiteboard than for me to just turn. I can touch the whiteboard. I'm in position. This is a small hip thrust. Boom. Hips. It's a hip movement. George got a, he got a damn this spear. He got to take a couple steps. He got to run. He out of position. I'm in position. So I want you to stop focusing on always trying to get it right. I want you to focus on being in a position to capitalize and make money in the moment. If we trapping as we trapping. All right, cool. All right. All right. Ooh. Ooh. It's one of them nights. It's one of them nights. How you feel? You good? I like that. I like that. I like that. Let's go. All right. So, Dave. Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Since I'm skipping, the one you put up right before that, let's go to it. Boom, right here. Here's what I want you to understand. We are now, right now, we are in earnings season. We are in earnings season. So because we are earnings season, this also will give us an inclination. Remember what we talk about, y'all? Diminishing returns. We're not going to let that leave our brain. Okay, let's go a little further. So we stay here right here, Dave. Here's what I want us to pay attention to. We are early in the earnings receipt, uh, earnings. We are early in the earnings season. And I want us to truly pay attention. Jose, we 2K in the chat, you hear me? I want us to truly pay attention. I want y'all to do me a favor, man. Share this link out. Share this link out. Let's get a thousand, let's get a thousand likes up before we get to 45 minutes. Let's get a thousand likes up before we get to 45 minutes. That helped the chain. That helped the program. All right, let's go up first. All right, let's go up first. Stay right there. I'll go back, Dave. I apologize. I wasn't talking to you. My bad, Dave. That let me know you're on your job. Tootie, let me hit a beat for five minutes. 30 seconds on a beat, Tootie. 30 seconds on a beat, Tootie, because I just felt like I did good just now. Tootie, can I get 30 seconds on a beat? That nigga sleep. That nigga sleep? <laughs> All right. So listen to this, y'all. Here's what I want you to understand. I'm about to give you eight things that you need to pay attention to during the earning, earning season. Eight things I want you to pay attention to. One, companies that you like 
This could be a white boy moment. Can this be a white boy moment? And Dave, question. If I got on a white boy, could you still leave that on the screen? White boy moment it is. I'm in my bag. I'm in my bag. I'm in my bag. Yeah. I'm in my bag. All right. Right there, right there, right there. All right. Can you leave it on my TV, Dave? Is that possible? And show them me on the whiteboard? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Jose, how my camera look? No, no. Gotta back it up a little bit. All right, there we go. Right there. All right. So watch with me, y'all. Let's work. Let's work. I told y'all we're gonna work. Y'all know I like to get on the whiteboard. I ain't gonna always hoop and holler. Sometimes I'm just gonna work. We're gonna work. So the first thing I want you to do is this. I want you to do this. Pay attention, watch this, to companies you love and their competitors. Huh? It's too dark, it's too light. I bet. I'll erase it. I'll erase it. Good job. Good job. I'll come back, y'all. I'll come back. I'll come back. Come back with it. This good, Dave? All right. Pay attention to companies. You love and their competitors. Watch this. So we got to pay attention to the companies that we love and we got to pay attention to their competitors. Here is why. Because even though you love a company, that may not be the best company for you to invest in. Even though you like a company, it may not be the right company for you to invest in. The competitors may be knocking it out of the frame. So here's what we do. You pay attention to the company that you like and you listen to. Is the debt decreasing? Is the revenue growing? Profit margins increasing? Free cash flow growing. What are the margins? Ooh. 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 Look, what are we paying attention to? Debt decreasing. Profits growing. Margins, debt is decreasing, profits growing, margins, free cash flow growth. And lastly, innovation. Innovation. All right, so I just give you a list. One, is the debt decreasing? Two, are the profits going? Three, what are the margins that you can compare? Four, is the free cash flow growing? Five, how are they innovating? How are they innovating? One, is the debt decreasing? Two, are the profits growing? Three, who has the better margins? Four, is the free cash flow growing? Five. Are they innovating? Boom. What are you going to do? Write these things down. The company that you like, write all of its competitors down and go side by side. See who is the best one.
I just flanged your ass and I just printed some money at the same time. That's, that's just right there. That's right there. Trap, I don't know where to start at. Boom, go look at the company that you like. Johnson & Johnson reported today. Netflix reported today. Go look at Netflix. Boom, okay? Who's the Netflix competitors? Let's just go see. Let's go take a look, okay? Okay, so if Net, huh? Go black. All right, that's cool. Boom, so you go to Netflix. Because I know some people are going to say, Trap, I need to see it. All right, Netflix. Who the competitors is? Amazon. Who else? Uh, Disney. All right, and whoever else you want to put together. So you say, okay, Netflix, debt decreasing. Netflix, profits growing. Netflix, free cash growth. Netflix, uh, we said, we said, oh, my bad. Margins, innovation. Compare Netflix to Amazon to Disney. Compare them all. Let's compare them all. Netflix, who got who debt decreasing? Netflix, who profits growing? Netflix, who free cash flow growing? Netflix, who got the better margins? Who got the most innovation? You compare your company that you like to the company that it compete to, and yo, you just figure out who got the better. This first thing on the list, next thing on the list is actions over words. So if you're looking at a company and they're saying, yeah, we're going to do this, yeah, we're going to do that, yeah, we're going to go do this, go look at the last three or four years and see if they said the last three, four years, if they done that up into this year. If they ain't done what they said they, they was going to do the last three years, then they definitely is lying to you. That's an X. That's an X. Because they lying. Know the numbers, okay, bet. What that mean, know the numbers, trap? That means you got to go understand the balance sheet. You got to go understand the income statement. You got to go understand the cash flow statement. You got to understand the numbers. So when they say projected growth is this, you go look at the numbers and say how you projected this when you got that. Learn from the past. Go look at what they did in the past. Number six is the debt decreasing. Number seven is the free cash flow increasing. Flow eight, are they addressing old issues? Come on, y'all. I won't put you in position to win. I won't put you in a position where you can execute. What happens is a lot of people telling you this and that. They're not putting you in a position to win. I don't want to tell you what to do. I want to tell you how to do it. That way when I don't feel like doing it, you can still do it. You can still fish. You can still change your family dynamic. You can still show your, your peers and your kids and your, and your nieces and your nephews how to pick great companies. You can do that, not that other person. Because what happens when that person decides to go chill with their family? What happens when that person decides they don't feel like doing it no more? What happens when that person decides they want to retire? Yeah, they probably made you some money here and there, but what happens can you make you some money? And can they make money without you? Every week we get up here and tell y'all what I can do. Every week I get up here and show y'all what I can do because I'm doing the same thing I'm telling you to do. My results rely 
on the information that I tell you. I'm not telling you do something, I'm doing something completely different. I ain't built like that. That's why I can give you the same blueprint. That's why I can give it to you brick by brick every Tuesday, week in, week out, because my philosophies evolve and I'm gonna get you to evolve with me. I ain't gonna never keep you under me. I want us to grow together. I want us to grow as a unit. I want us to grow as a family. I want, it, I want it to be a collective effort. I don't need the praise. I don't need the glory. I just need you. I need you to be in the trenches with me. I need you to be building your portfolio with me. I need you to be winning when I'm winning. Not because I told you what to do, but because I told you the information. I gave you the ingredients so you could bake your, bake your own cake. I don't gotta bake it for you, but I don't mind sitting in the kitchen with you and say, hey, the stove a little hot. Turn the oven down a little bit. Turn the oven down a little bit. Put a little more butter in the pan. Hey, you're gonna burn the skillet if you do it like that. And I'm okay with you making the mistake because I made a many mistakes on the journey. So I'll never be superior to you. I'm going to leave from the front. I'm going to leave from the back. And I'm going to leave from the middle. I'm going to play all positions. How do we recalibrate the scale? The scale of what we deserve and the scale of what we've accomplished so far. And I promise you, what we've accomplished is way less than what we deserve. But here's what happens, y'all. We set low levels of things that we accomplished. We set low levels on what we feel we deserve. We set low levels of things to go hit and things to go win at. So when we hit those low levels, we think we did a lot. He ain't did nothing. Not when we looking at the overall picture. Not when we looking at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is not only what do I have deserve, what do I feel like I deserve, the bigger picture is what do I have the information to execute on? How can what I deserve and what I have the information to execute on come together in alignment to what I achieve? Say that again, man. How do what I deserve and what I have the information to execute on come into alignment with what I actually achieve? It may take a little time for some of us. That's why we pull out the whiteboard. It may take a little time. Some may be further than others. Some may not even be in the game, but guess what? I want to come in each and every Tuesday and serve on all levels, from the new investor to the medium investor to the high investor. I'm going to serve on all levels. That's why we intimate here. That's why Trapper Tuesdays is a vibe. It's a family. It's a community. It's a village. Because it take a village for all of us to get where we got to go. It, ain't, it can't be about no individual efforts. It can't be about no individual accolades that ain't got no room for where we going. They don't got no, they don't have no time for individuals. Collective. We go fast alone, we go far together. How can we go far enough not to close the wealth gap? That ain't my, my, my mission ain't to close the wealth gap. I'm going to keep it real. They too far ahead. I ain't trying to close the wealth gap. They too far ahead. I ain't trying to close the wealth. They got too many cheat codes. They make the game up as they go. I would be setting myself up for failure if I said, trap, we trying to close the wealth gap. I'm just trying to give birth to new millionaires. I'm trying to give birth to generations of freedom. I'm trying to give birth to generations of opportunities. I can't close the wealth gap. They're going to keep making cheat codes. 
the right ones got three, four families in already. We still struggling trying to be the first one. They got three generations in already. We still struggling trying to be the first one. We don't know what the second one looked like. I don't know what my daughter gonna do when I'm gone. I, that's the next gen, that's generational wealth. I don't know what she gonna do when I'm gone. They already looking at 33 generations. They three, four generations in already. I can't close that gap. But what I can do is put a blueprint, the trap a mantra. I am the architect of my family's blueprint. There's a reason why that's a staple in that mantra. You gotta be the architect. You got to have what it take. You got to be willing to get an empty canvas and say, this what it is. This going to do this. This going to do that. This going to do this. I talked to cousin. I said, cuz, we got to be in alignment in order for me to go where I got to go at. We got to be in alignment. Not he got to be in alignment. Not I got to be in alignment. I say, cuz, we got to be in alignment for us to get where we got to go at. And this ain't transactional. This ain't just about me. I got you here because I want us to go somewhere. Not me. Not me. Not trapped. Not free. I need us to go there, bruh. You got to have a vision where you want us to go there, not just you. Because when you just go, you ain't set the stage for nobody else. So when you lose, everybody else got to keep getting it out the mud. Everybody else got to keep starting from scratch. How we going to close the gap? I ain't trying to close the gap. They four generations in already. I want us to be the initiators. I want us to be the pioneers. I want us to be the trailblazers. I want us to be the blueprint. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. How you feel? You all right? All right, good, good, good. All right, y'all. So, Dave, let's go back to... Recession portfolio. <laughs> Let's go back to the recession portfolio. All right, so for everybody that's new here, I got some new people in the chat. Let me see you. If I got some new people in the chat, let's see it. Say I'm new, I'm new, I'm new. Stock charge shorty, I see you. All right, so. When we go to the recession portfolio, so each and every week, since we have started trapping Tuesdays, man, we go to the recession portfolio. It is my way of showing the trappers the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's my way of showing you that I am doing exactly what I am telling you to do. It is my way of showing you, to all my new people in the chat, welcome home. Tori, let's, everybody who's been here for a minute, if you're in the chat, let's give them a big old welcome home. Let's give him a big old welcome home, y'all. Right, everybody that's new, let's give him a big welcome home. Welcome home, y'all. Huh? So listen, if you're new here right now, we need you to share too. So you are part of the family. If you're new here, we know that you're going to be back next week. Yo, so let's share this out with everybody, as many people as we can. Let's get 1,500 likes in the chat. Let's get 1,500 likes in the chat. You feel me? So here we go, y'all. So each and every week, I show you all the recession portfolio. It is so you can see 100% that I am being transparent and authentic to you. In case you don't know, last year, the stock market was down. The S&P was down, what, 13%. The NASDAQ was down 33%. Well, last year, Wall Street Trapper beat the market by 17% with the recession portfolio. Let's go to the first one, Dave. The next one. That's the options. Let's go to the first one. Yep, first one. So this is our buy and hold. And a recession portfolio consists of two types of portfolios. One is the options and one is the buy and hold. The key to the buy and hold portfolio is we don't have to hold no more than 10 stocks. We don't have to hold no more than 10 stocks. So here's our nine stocks right here. We got ATKR right now. Damn, I should have got the percentages. Um, it's up $1,900. We made $46 on it today. Costco is my baby. We up $8,500 today. 
um, Crocs, 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 Crocs. Jose got the Crocs on. We've been in Crocs for one month. Approximately one month, we've been in Crocs. We are up five, almost $6,000. Now, let me tell you what's crazy. In the, in the, so if you're in Masters of the Triple Beam or if you're in the Triple Beam team, that's our uh, Patreon group. If you're in Masters of the Triple Beam or you're in the Patreon, when I got Crocs, somebody said, Trap, Crocs is kind of high right now. Give me your philosophy behind getting now. I said, well, with the recession portfolio, um, the goal is to understand the economic environment we're in that presents me with the opportunity. Croc had been on a two-day losing streak when I bought it. It was on a two. It was on a two-day downhill. It was in. It was in that area where the market was uh, at that twenty-five VIX. Remember when the VIX was real high, like twenty-four, twenty-five. It was in that area. And so I said, the VIX is high. The market is in fear. It's a good opportunity because of that. So we got Crocs a month ago. And right now we are up. Today alone we made 12000 in Crocs. We up almost $6,000 in a month. Shout out to Crocs because they are, they run it. Uh, next we have Eli Lilly. Y'all know I love the insulin maker and new and approved obesity drug dealer. Uh, but y'all know Lockheed Martin. Why do I like Lockheed Martin? Because America loves shooting. America loves going to war. And if you don't understand that we are in position to be at war real, real soon, you, my friend, don't get it. So, y'all see, Lockheed Martin is up $13,000. Meta, Facebook, we got it uh, two months ago. I think two months ago, we got it in what? This is April. So we got Meta late February. Late February, we got Meta or early March, something like that. Um, we up 29%. NVIDIA uh, up 23% at the same time. This is my sleeper baby right here. TPH, it is the real estate um, one. Real estate. We, love, we like TPH. And VTRX, this is the company that actually has a... Uh, they have a non-addictive opioid in the pipeline. It's non-addictive, cuz. People say it's non-addictive, bro. Non-addictive. <laughs> People have a non-addictive opioid in the pipeline, and I like it. All right? So, as you can see at the top, watch this. If you are, watch this. If you're in Masters of the Triple Beam or the Triple Beam team, you got in Crocs with me, you got in NVIDIA with me, you got in Facebook with me, and you got TPH with me. So if you in the Masters of the Triple Beam or if you're in the Triple Beam team, you got in Crocs, Meta, NVIDIA, and TPX. So you got in all, you got in them four positions with me. Because I told you when I got in them. So watch this. Watch this, Jose. If you're in Masters of the Triple Beam or the Triple Beam team, those four investments have already paid for the Patreon. You feel me? But the crazy part is, watch this. They probably didn't execute.
And you know why I didn't execute? Because they thought about, they came in with a full cup. If you're going to come in something like that, you got to come with an empty cup and be willing to ride the journey with me. You, and I'm not saying nothing wrong with it because what happens is when you come with a full cup, it's okay to question because I answer their questions all the time. But they're always looking for it to go cheaper. Now, you still may get an opportunity, but what happens is you, you always say, well, damn, trap got it just now. I'm going to let it go a, a little cheaper. Shout out to my Texas trap because I told them I had Crocs on my list and they, they went and broke it down and they killed it. Sometimes you got to be willing to say, I'm here because I want to execute. I'm here, I'm here because I want to execute. You pivot when I pivot. You feel me? You're in the, you're in the masses of the triple beam in the, uh, to pivot when I pivot. And some, look, the man say, yep, trap, do answer our questions. I do answer. All right, let's go a little further. Let's go to the next one now. All right, so also, watch this. Here's the four option plays we're in right now. We've only been in these plays, watch this, one month. I kid you not. We've been in these plays for one month, literally. We got the Apple Play a month ago. We've been in the Apple Play a month now. Now watch this. Two, one week into the Apple Play, we was down. But I went into them in a the master of the truth and I said, check this out, y'all. We down. Don't panic. I even said it on here. I said, we down. Don't panic. The way this set up, we're going to be all right. I got on the Ultra Beauty play two weeks ago. The XL Lee play is the only one we down on right now. The XL, XLK play, we've been in that for two weeks too. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Let me say this again. If you're a master of the triple beam or the triple beam team, you've been in these plays with me. Also, you're in another play. You're in the NVIDIA play that I got out of, and some of them was like, nah, Trap. Now, I do know they had a couple people that said, Trap, I'm going to just ride the NVIDIA play out. And look what they did. They rolled it from 65 up to 77 a day. So guess what happened? The NVIDIA play paid for the triple beam team. All I'm saying is sometimes you got to be put yourself in position so you can execute. You feel me? So some people are paying 49, some people are paying 79, but guess what? Already in a month, it is paid for itself. All right. All right, Dan, let's go to the next thing, man. We'll get off of that. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna play with them too long. I ain't gonna play with them too long. I ain't gonna be in it too long. All right, man. So today we're gonna talk about this, man. Big bank take little bank, man. So listen, man. So it was important for us to look at bank earnings. Bank earnings were so important this week. Why? Because of SVB. Shout out to Nat for the super chat. Because of SVB, because of the small banks falling down. And I want to say something. I want to say something. This was a mark my word. Jose, what did I say? I said, J.P. Morgan will benefit from these banks collapsing. I said that. 
I said that. J.P. Morgan, so even though this was first quarter, J.P. Morgan also reported they have gained another $50 billion in, no, I'm lying, $50 million in new accounts. $50 million in new accounts. Episode 30. I just said it four weeks ago. Five weeks ago. J.P. Morgan just said, and we have 50 million in new accounts. J.P. Morgan Chase said, we have added 50 million in new accounts. So watch this. Big banks are on the rise, and I told people this. People that's in the bigger banks not worried about the banks falling. Why? Because they definitely just moved different. So what happened? J.P. Morgan today crushed it. Well, last week, crushed it. Look at this. Revenue, profit rose 52%. Wells Fargo, 45%. Citibank, 23%. And profit. The reason why I said something, y'all, I said, yo, we are in a position. So when Trap say something, I want y'all to listen instead of always just like wanting to fight me all the time. I'm okay with a good debate, right? I'm okay with a good debate when you get the research. Right? I'm always open for a financial debate. I love that. I'm not always right. But I know when I bring you something, I'm bringing it to you because I've researched. I'm speaking to you from a mixture of emotion and data. Most people who are speaking to me are speaking to me of what, cuz? They're speaking to me of emotion. Because they simply just don't agree with what I'm saying. It's okay to not agree. But are you not agreeing because of data? Or are you not agreeing because you just don't like me? A lot of times we get the messenger and the message mixed up. Because we don't like the messenger, we don't want to hear the message. You feel me? Because we don't like the messenger, we going to disregard the message. Don't be like that. All right, so watch this. Here's what I, here's, even though all of them increased in profit, here's the one thing I did look at, it's Jose. J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Citibank all together but individually allotted $2 billion on the side for bad loans. It's called loss aversion. So what they did was, they said, yo, check this out. Our profits grew, our revenues grew, we all grew more than positives. But check this out. There's also people, there's also people out here spending money that they do not have. So we're going to put $2 billion on the side for the people who going to flip, who going to flop. For the people who going to... The ones who going to go to the bank and say... I'm in a bind, Nate. I'm up. The ones who going to go to the bank and say... I'm in a bind, Nate. Some other time. Some other time. I really need that money. I really need this money, Nate. They really need the money. But they ain't a buy. Watch this. What did we say earlier? We said when the information and the money come together, you can execute. Here's what J.P. Morgan and everybody else know. People don't have information. So people with no information do what? Mess up money. People with no information blow money. So because the bank got the data and the bank got the money, they're going to put some other money in position for people like you who they know not going to pay the loan. All right, let's go a little further. I ain't going to beat that up too long. I ain't going to beat that up too long. Watch this. Revenue, this is the crazy part. The people grew their revenue 
during the turmoil in March. Through the chaos. Did we not say that? What did we say? Hey, bro, J.P. Morgan, they're going to get bigger. They're going to get bigger. Watch this. It's great. It's great to be a mega bank even, if, even in a bank crisis. The largest bank in the U.S. is thriving in a world full of rising interest rates. Watch this. Watch this. With all those new banks, with all those new depositors, I want you to pay attention. Next, next this is mark my word. Episode 38, Jose. Episode 38. I'm about to tell you who's going to win in this. Because I told my trap master this before. You got to understand how a bank makes money. Now, J.P. Morgan don't make money like this, but guess who do? Wells Fargo. Watch how much money Wells Fargo make next earnings report off of overdraft fees. Watch how much money Wells Fargo make next Earnings off of overdraft fees because the people who coming from the small banks and the credit union ran who going to the bigger banks, they don't understand that Wells Fargo makes a killing off of overdraft fees. You got to understand how your bank makes money. J.P. Morgan Chase don't make a lot of money off overdraft fees. They make the majority of their money off what? Wealth management. They're the big bank. They make money off giving big businesses money. Check this out. Wells Fargo, they make a lot of money off fees. They are a fee-based bank. Watch how money Wells Fargo makes next month off overdraft fees. Because the people who go there with lack of information and a little money. And they're going to overdraft. And Wells Fargo going to knock them out the frame. But since we're talking about banks, let's go to the whiteboard. Since we're talking about banks, I won't go to the whiteboard. Since we're talking about banks, I definitely want to go to the whiteboard and explain a bank. I want to explain a bank since we're talking about banks. Got some numbers for y'all, too. I like having numbers for y'all. Let me know if they can see. Dave, if they can see? I'm going to write this down to y'all. I'm going to write this down to y'all. I'm locked in, cuz. We locked in? Watch this. The bank... That sells coffee. The bank that sells coffee. The bank that sells coffee. You know who that bank is? You know who that bank is, cuz? I'm about to show you the bank that sells coffee, cuz. The bank that sells coffee. Starbucks. Starbucks is the bank that sells coffee. Do y'all want to talk about it for a second? Let's talk about it for a second. Cuz, like, wait, cuz, why you rocking like that? Cuz rocking. Why is cuz rocking like that? So watch this. Before we get into this bank that sells coffee, let's first get into this. Did you know this? Between 1997 and 2016, the average, the average Starbucks is built 
in developing neighborhoods. All right? I say that for a reason, because I want you to understand something. In that time, in that time, watch this. Watch this. I'm about to blow your brain. In that time, between 1997 and 2016, the average home near Starbucks has increased 56 to 97 percent in value. Starbucks was essential and critical at putting Starbucks in developing and growing neighborhoods. On average, between 1997 and 2016, the average house in that area has increased between 56% and 97% just from the revenue and what Starbucks does to an economy. That's the equivalent to LeBron James going to a team and every... Listen, when LeBron James left Cleveland, the people was mad because all the stores around there, the sales went down. That is what a Starbucks does to a neighborhood. We're going to just start right there. So, what do you think happens when Starbucks negotiates with an environment? Yo, we're about to build a Starbucks right here. You can have two Starbucks in a five block radius. I swear I see it all the time. You have one on one side of the street, and in five blocks, you have another on the other side of the street. Bro, it is hard. They understand. They understand what it takes. Here's what I want you to understand. And they don't discriminate. They put them everywhere. They put them everywhere. They just find the best place in the hood to put it at. You'll find a Starbucks in the, in the hood. I, you will find a Starbucks. A Starbucks is in the hood. They don't discriminate, but they add value to every ecosystem they belong to. This is not, this is not me guessing here. This is, this is real research. This is strategy. All right, let's go a little further. Now we're gonna get into now we're gonna get into the bank that sell coffee. We're gonna get into a bank that sell coffee. All right, let me see in the chat how you feeling. Let me see in the chat how you feeling. Jose, this is a good one here. We can break this one down. All right, let me see in the chat how you feeling. How they feeling in the chat? I need you to see. I need to see in the chat how y'all feeling. I need to see in the chat how y'all feeling. <laughs> the bank that sells coffee. Did you know Starbucks was a bank that sells coffee? You knew that? All right, cool. You would know, Gindy. Tootie ain't know. All right, let's go. We trapping, we trapping, we trapping. We trapping, we trapping, we trapping. All right, cool. Let's go. Let's go a little further. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Starbucks. Starbucks. Watch this, y'all. Has 1.6 billion in... What this called? Unused. Wait up. One in my bad. Revenue from gift card rewards. Soon as I say that, it made sense. 1.6 billion. 1.6 billion. So watch this. That don't got nothing to do with the coffee sales. 
We talking about from the gift card. We talking about from, from reward members. That ain't no coffee. That ain't no muffin. That ain't no sales revenue, Jose. That's the reward. That's the, that's the card. So watch this. Ooh, I got Jose in a, I got him in a bind, y'all. I got Jose in a bind. I got Jose in a bind, y'all. So watch this. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Well, trap, what that, what that mean, though? What that mean, though? Watch this. Watch this. They also have 196 million In cash from reward points. So here's how this go. You load cash on the card. You get points in the return the points by coffee. Hear me out. Hear me out. Ooh, this out of here. Check it out. 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 Money equals points. No, money turn into points. Points equal product. Right? But let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. The only, there's only two things here that's tangible. There's only two things here that's tangible. The tangible is the money and the product. That's the only two things that's tangible, right? Hear me, hear me well. Hear me, hear me well. At the price point, okay, let's start here. Let's go back a little further. Let's go, let's go here. Starbucks has a competitive advantage. A few of them. Brand name, community, Network. All right. So watch this. Watch this. Because I'm about to show y'all how dope it is. Starbucks is 100% the apple of coffee. Let's say this again. Starbucks is the apple of coffee. Stop trying to buy Starbucks right now. The stock market closed. <laughs> Starbucks is the apple of coffee. Because watch this. 97% of Starbucks users don't mind price increase. They don't mind price increase. If you go look at the stats, Starbucks increased the price at least 10% a year. Starbucks increased the price of products at least 10% a year. So watch this. As I increase the price, what I give you in points is not in void. Does that make sense? Jose, think about this. I see you looking. Hear it out. If I increase the price to a point over time, well, the price of two cups of coffee essentially buy you one cup of coffee, then what I give you in points don't matter anyway. The points aren't real. They're an illusion. The whole idea is to get the money. But watch this. We go a little further. We go a little further. Watch this. Watch this. 
Everybody looking at Apple. We're going to talk about that. But Starbucks, watch this, is Starbucks is fintech. Starbucks is financial technology. Trap, how is Starbucks financial technology? Because you got to use the Starbucks app. The Starbucks app is where the money is. Now they have a platform of um, technology where they can say outside of the Starbucks product, we have a, fin a financial technology, our app. The app makes them fintech where we have over $196 million in cash and over $1.6 billion in revenue. This free money. This don't got nothing to do with product. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. With $1.6 billion, billion dollars in revenue, with $196 million in cash, they actually have more on-hand cash than the average bank. With $196 million in cash, they actually have more money than the average bank, and the money is consistently growing, why? Because the people who go to Starbucks need it at least once a day. It's crack. And guess what? The reward members, the perks are so amazing, they keep on putting money into it. And they're coming back with a partner. You want the Starbucks? And they got their own language. You don't even understand what they got. They got their own language. It ain't small, medium, large, extra large. It's Venti, Grande, whatever the other's names is. I be like, give me a large. They be like, you want a Venti? They be correcting me. Like, yeah, Venti, God, yeah, that's what I want. But also, also, the way they made Starbucks. Go look at Starbucks. Go look at Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts want you in and out. Starbucks wants you to chill. Why is it like that, Trap? Because they want you to understand that this is your home away from home. What do you do when you're at home? You relax. You chill. You feel, give me a coffee. Give me a whatever. Give me a biscuit. You want to have lunch here? Whatever. Give me a donut. Give me a banana bread. That's what I get. Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a, a lollipop bread thing, whatever it is, right? But the goal is they put you in a situation where you go there so much, they give you the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is on fire, ain't no struggles. That Wi-Fi probably can host this show. So now you can go there and have the lunch meeting and have no problem. You feel me? Starbucks is 100% the bank that sells coffee. What I'm going to go with? <laughs> that boy is good. Mm -hmm. Let me know how y'all like that breakdown in the chat. Let me, let, let me know how y'all like that breakdown in the chat. Let me know how you like that breakdown in the chat. Let me know if you like the breakdown in the chat. Let me know if you like the breakdown in the chat, man. If you're new to Trapping Tuesdays, welcome home, y'all. Tuesday, can I get the beat for 30 seconds? This nigga sleep. <laughs> Let's go, partner! Hey! Let me know how you like that beat. Let me know how you like it in the chat. The Starbucks breakdown. If you new here, if you new here, 
Huh? Huh? Let's go! Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it! Ooh. I told y'all we was gonna cook tonight. I was feeling a little good. Cut it, cut it. All right, all right, all right. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Jose, how you feeling? That was fired up. That was good, though. We had a blast with that one. All right, Jose, Dan, let's go a little further. All right. Yeah, I talked about that. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. All right, let's go a little further. Listen, right here. Psh, got something new for y'all. Apple the phone company. Apple, the cloud company. Apple, the computer company. Apple, the wearables company. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the bank that sells phones. Apple, the bank. Let's just sit on that for a second. Every week I tell y'all this, y'all. An apple stock a day keeps the poverty away. Why do y'all keep fighting me on this? Trap, what should I buy apple? I don't know. Don't even worry. An apple stock a day keeps the poverty away, bruh. I'm going to keep it real, y'all. It's the greatest company that America's ever seen. It's the greatest company that America's ever seen. So let's talk about this, man. The way that Tim Cook is operating this is just a whole nother. He is, he is, I'm not going to lie. If we thinking about it, he actually stole Starbucks blueprint and rearranged it. So look what he's doing now. So now Tim Cook has dropped the Apple savings account that is essentially going to give you 4.15% interest on your money. Now, that's better than majority of the banks in the world. The dope part about it is there's no minimum balance, no de lim minimum deposit needed. So essentially, let's think about what Apple did. So Apple now has buy now, pay later. Apple now has savings account. And Apple has a credit card. Ladies and gentlemen, Apple has just solidified itself as a fintech company. I told y'all this. In 2019, Tim Cook decided that he did not want the iPhone to be the only thing that held his business up. So he took the iPhone off of the earnings report and he gave us the cloud, the computer, the wearables, the services. And he listened to people complain and cry and talk about Apple is not innovative, Apple is not innovative, yet and still the man has now 1.5 billion people are now solidified iPhone users. Let's just start there. The same company that's not innovative, the same company that's keep giving us the same phone, changing the camera, and all this other stuff that the naysayers got to say, this company has now solidified itself with 1.5 billion, with a B, users. So let me see if there's 8 trillion people in the world, 1.5 put it, what, a little under a quarter of the people in the world? Huh? There's 8 billion people in the world. And so he have 1. 1.5 billion users that's a little bit under a quarter of the people in the world have iPhones. Let's just sit that right there for a second. You feel me? That's about 19, 21 percent. 
Let's just sit that right there for a second. Watch this. I keep telling y'all about built-in infrastructure. Built-in infrastructure. What is the built-in infrastructure, Strap? Well, go show me a bank that got 1.5 billion users. J.P. Morgan is the biggest bank in the United States of America. It don't have one point, they don't got 1.5 billion people in America. We only got 385 million people in America. There's only 385 million people in America. Literally. There's 385 million people in America. So not even a bank in America has 1.5 billion people. Apple now has 1.5 billion users. What happens when I take those 1.5 billion users whose card that I already have in my data? I don't even, so it, they don't have to make us put out a card. If you have an Apple device, you already got the card in there. So now you already sign Apple Pay is linked. Apple Pay is linked. Okay, bet. So now Apple Pay is linked. What's the next thing we got to do? Yep, we're going to give you some type of incentive to do what? Sign up for this savings account thing. All right, because we can say what? So more people are going to say, well, Trap, they got this bank and that bank and that bank. That's, that also does full point sum. Okay, here's what I'll tell you. Go look at depositors. Go look at cash. Because right now, Apple has $51 billion in cash. It's down 20%. From, it's down, I'm lying, it's down, fit, it's down 27% from last year. But it's because of acquisitions and research and development and mergers that they're doing. They're not just spending money. So watch this. They got $51 billion in cash. Not assets, liquid cash, cohort cash. Go find a bank that got 50 billion in cash. Let's start right there. Let's start right there. When you start telling me about this bank got 4.5% interest, this bank got 5% interest, go find a bank that got 50 billion in cash. What that means is if something happened to your money, guess what Apple can say? Yo, we got the money. We got 50 billion in cash sitting right here. What's up? But also the revenue. Go find a bank that's bringing in the revenue that they bringing in. So when you tell me this bank got it and this bank got it and this bank got it. So one person told me there's a bank called, uh, I forgot what the bank was. So I went and looked the bank up. The bank got declining negative free cash flow five years in a row. But they're giving you a 4.5% interest. Boy, you want to get on my face? I said, cuz. I said, cuz. I said, look. I said, say, bro, it's in the chat. When I, go look in the chat when I posted about Apple. I said, hey, bro. The bank got declining free cash flow for the last five years, but they give you 4.5% interest. Tell me how that work. Where that money coming from? Where that money coming from, fam? I said the depositors declined by 21% over the last three years. Depositors, that just means people want to put money in the bank. It has declined at 21%. You, you, that's the bank you're telling me about? Stop. Stop. I said, that's the bank you're telling me about, fam? And I wasn't mad at him because he was just trying to say, trap, this bank do it too. So now I'm going to be trapped and say, all right, let me go see. Right? Because here's what I do know. Apple's free cash flow increasing over the last five years. Apple's free uh, cold hard cash, is that it was at 121. Now they got $51 billion in cold hard cash. I bet. And they got $51.5 billion users. Users. Man, stop playing with me. Bro, if they got 1.5 billion users, just think if they just had 300,000, 300 million people that signed up for the bank. Because guess what happened? They're going to do the same thing Starbucks just did. 300 million people putting their money in the bank. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to take that money, leverage it. This is what great businesses do. They're going to take that money that we put in there for savings. They're going to just use the same bank models, but they're going to say, yo, if you ask me for some money, if something happened, yo, we got 
50 billion in cold hard cash. That ain't even counting revenue that's coming in from the people who got Apple subscriptions and Apple Plus subscriptions and you in the app store with them. That 30% they're getting off all the apps in app. We ain't even talking about that. We just talking about the 50 billion we got sitting in cash. That's all we're talking about. So they're going to take that money. He is going to go expand. He's still going to give you, watch this. He's going to give you 4.5%, 4.15% a year. Watch this. He don't even got to give it to you cold hard cash. He could just put it in your account digitally. He could do the same thing that the bank doing. He could just put it in your account digitally. So let's go a little further though. This is how I know he playing chess, not checkers. He just opened up the first store in India. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Here's what people don't know. India just took over China as the world's largest economy. India just took over China as the world's largest economy with like 1.2 billion people. By the end of the decade, they're projected to have 1.7 billion people and they're projected to be out of here. So not only are they the largest largest economy, guess what they else lead the world in? They lead the world in technology. India leads the world in technology. Apple just opened the first store in India. Son, he not playing, he understands something. He understands something. He understands something. So mind you, our people arguing me about China, 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 China. Yo, check this out. India just became the world's largest economy in the world, in the whole, everywhere. 1.26 billion people everywhere. They out here, fam, and they deep. And guess what they want to do? They just want to create electronics. They don't even want to go to war with nobody. They like, bro, we just want. Tim Cook did something I ain't never seen. He opened a store in India. He taking pictures with the people. Look. I said, ooh. I said, ooh. Bad. So while we worrying about China, 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 man, ain't nobody worrying about no China. If they want smoke, we got smoke, but they don't want no smoke no more. I promise you, they're going to keep trying to come up with stuff. I promise you, bro, it ain't like that. India, the world's largest economy. Let's go a little further, man. <sighs> man, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. All right, so let's go. Remember I told y'all earlier that I do 100% feel like we are going to see another pullback. I definitely feel it. I see it. I know it's going to come. It has to happen, but I think we're going to get to 3,900. Um, I don't, I think 39 will be where it's at. And, and if we go deep, deep, let's see. So here's what we got. Mutual funds, most bearish of the year, Bank of America. Uh, CNB survey says economic pessimism reached new high. Um, AAI says bearish sentiment above historical average. JP Morgan says 9% of investors see the market falling in 2023. So the big dogs still see us hitting a bear market. They still see us hitting a bear market. But here's what I want to do. I want to talk to you all about something here right quick. Watch this. Let's go a little further, Dave. Big money made, big taxes paid. I want you to understand something right here too, right? So the people above, so watch this. Social Security taxes is 30.3%. 30, Individual income taxes 54%. Other expenses move. So the people at one, billion, 1 million and above pay the most taxes. The people at 1 million and above pay the most taxes. 
Now, what happens is they'll go years without actually, like, they'll find ways to get around it, but eventually they have to pay it. So I've read something that said uh, the people that make a million or more pay, like, 39% of the taxes in America. 39% of the taxes in America. Over 70% of long-term gains are expected to be reported by people earning the most. Now, watch this. Even though people, even though people who make the most money pay the most taxes, I guess, I, I guess that's how I wanted to say it. Even though they pay the most taxes, they also make the most money. So let's go a little further, Dave. Watch this. There we go. 16%. Watch this. This was crazy. This was crazy. This was crazy. The top 1% of America are responsible for 16% of the American income. And are responsible for 39% of federal income tax. That's big. Bro, you are responsible for 16% of the income in the world in the in this country? 1% of the people? That's crazy. So the average tax rates millionaires, 26%, um, from 75K to 100% is 5%. Let's go a little further, Dave. I want to stop right here. Before we get into that, I want to tell y'all something. I want to tell y'all something. As an individual investor, you have so much leverage on America. You have so much advantage on the markets. I was doing some research and I figured out that between the inception, so there's 7,500, there's 7,500 fund managers and fund companies in America. 7,500. There's 7,500. Watch this. Of those 7,500 companies, of those 7,500 companies that funds, so pension funds and, 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 and investing funds and, and 401k funds, only 29% of them have historically beat the market from inception to today's date. Out of 7,700 funds, we talking about Pension funds, we're talking about retirement funds, we're talking about uh, fund managers, people who invest money for people. From inception, they, when they were born, until now, only 26% of them actually beat the market. From inception. Watch this. 39% of them beat the market on the year-to-date average, meaning from, from January to January to only 30 out of 7,700 companies. 39, watch this. On average, 52% of them have negative returns. So we're not even talking about beating the market. We saying, just re give me a positive return. So watch this. 39% beat the market since inception. No, 26% beat the market since inception. 39% year to date. 52% even give you a positive return. So 52%, but yet these are the people who are managing your 401ks. These are the people that are responsible for your retirements. Dave, let's go all the way back to the recession portfolio right quick. Just right quick. From January till now. Now watch this. 47%.
gives you on average a 7.7% return. Now watch this. I wrote this number down. This was crazy when I wrote this down. So the average mutual fund, the average fund has 160 stocks in it. Way too much. 160 stocks. First of all, that's the reason why you can't beat the market. You got 160 stocks in it. Second, so 160 stocks, they average the 7.7% return, the 42%, 77, 7.7% return. From 50 to 99, they averaged a 7% return. From 47 to 50, averaged a 6, 65, I'm sorry, 47 to 65 averaged a 6.2% return. All of those are less than the market. And it's not counting, one, the 1% fee or taxes. So that's not even counting the 1% fee or taxes. Here's what I want you to understand. Here's what I want you to understand. And you go, please, go research my number. Please go research my numbers. Please go research my numbers. Please go research my numbers. It comes from Morningstar. This is from Morningstar. Watch this. Last year, the market was down. Oh, here's the final number. $1.02 trillion are lost every year in asset management. I forgot to put that one out there. $1.02 trillion. Let me put that out there. I forgot to put that part out there. $1.02 trillion is lost every year in asset management. But guess what? They still get paid. Guess what? They still get paid. They still get paid for losing your money. How the hell somebody going to get paid for losing your money and you don't want to take the chance on losing your own money? I'm not going to lie. I would feel better if I lost my money on my own than me giving my money to Jose and he losing it for me. The most important decision that you'll ever make in your life is how much of your money you're going to make work for you. The most important decision you're going to ever make in your life is how much of your money you're going to make work for you. And I promise you, y'all, if you look at this recession portfolio, last year the market was down 13%. The market was down 33%. We beat the market by 17%, and we showed it each and every week. This year alone, we up 13.50%. I'm not saying we're going to end the year like that, but I pray we do. I hope we do. I hope I can make the right navigations, right? I feel confident in what I can do. But check this out, y'all. The S&P right now is only up 8%. The S&P right now is only up 8%. Yo, we up 5.5% more than the S&P 500, y'all. And my biggest returns, not even in tech stocks. Look, Meta up 2%, I mean 2,900, NVIDIA up 2,300. My biggest return, Costco, 8,000. My biggest return, Crocs, 5,800. My biggest return, Eli Lilly, 6,400. My biggest return, Lockheed Martin. My other return, 6,000. Tech is the smallest of my returns. All I'm saying is, yo, we get the tools out every week for free. That ain't counting the Wall Street trapping course. That ain't counting the jumping off the porch course. That ain't counting nothing. That's just talking about every week because we love the game. We come give you information for free. We just need you to learn how to act on the information. We need you to come here and tune in. I don't do this just to, I do this because I love it, not because I'm trying to make money on you. I want to see you make money. 
I won't be the one responsible for turning my last name into an asset. I won't be the one that's responsible for being an architect of my family's blueprint. I won't be the one that's responsible for increasing my family's purchasing power. And until you want to take on that responsibility, yo, if you allow them to fees, you, get them permission to starve you. And I keep telling y'all, man, don't give nobody permission to starve you. I don't care if you don't know it. Trap, I don't know where to start. Well, start here. Trap, I don't know what stocks to buy. It don't matter. Learn. You don't got to get it right. I just need you in position. Because if you're in position, you can execute. And still, as long as you stand on the sidelines saying what you don't know and do I got enough money to do this? I don't care. Listen, you might don't be up $2,000, but guess what? If you could be up $100, that's $100 you ain't had before. If you can be up $600, guess what? That's $600 you ain't have before. I show it to y'all every week. Yo, we lost here. We took an L, but it's all right. You going to the 401ks, you, go, you don't even know what they got inside the damn things. The market up or down, you don't know what's inside the thing. You don't even know how I got to ask the people what's inside of it. But they're responsible for your retirement? They're responsible for your livelihood? How dare you put somebody else in responsible of your how you going to live when you retire? You think somebody who barely care for you while you own a job gonna care about you when you ain't an asset to them no more? I'm not telling you not to love your career, but let's just be real. The people barely care about you now. What happens when you are no longer the asset for that company? They supposed to still care about you and that's the people you want responsible for your retirement? I'm just saying y'all, this is the perfect opportunity. This is the perfect environment for us to truly increase our network. But not only that, yo, this is the perfect environment for us to equip ourselves with the tools that we can be equipped for a lifetime. The tools, y'all. The tools. And I'm going to just keep it real with y'all. Yo, I'm not no, right, y'all so much smarter than me. If I'm keeping it real, I don't got to be superior to y'all. I don't got to act like I'm above y'all. Man, y'all so smart, so much smarter than me. I stopped going to school in the ninth grade, 10th grade. Man, y'all graduated from college. Man, y'all got PhDs, doctorates, bachelor's degrees. Man, I barely got my GED in prison. I ain't no smarter than y'all. Y'all smarter than me, man. But I'm just about ded being dedicated to the process. I'm just about being in position. I'm just about executing. I don't care if I don't know it. That don't give me an excuse not to do it. I'm just that person. I don't need the whole cake. I just got to know if the eggs right there and the milk right there and the flour right there. I might don't have the mixing machine, but I got a whip and I'm going to just. But you know what a lot of y'all going to say? Man, that's too much work. You going to tell me reading a 300 page book is too much work, but you'll sit in front of the TV and binge watch seven episodes or something. That's too much work, Trap. I don't understand, Trap. Of course you don't understand. It's your first time looking at a balance sheet. It's your first time looking at an income statement. It's your first time looking at a cash flow statement. Of course you don't understand. But I dare you to look at it for six months in a row and see the same thing. I dare you to join Trappers Anonymous. I dare you to take the Wall Street Trapping course and for six months you be in that group. I dare you to be in the Triple Bean team or something like that for six months and come out saying, I'm the same way I got in. I'm the same way when I leave as I got in. I promise you that ain't gonna happen. Not on my watch. And I ain't even trying to sell you nothing on that. I'm just saying, sometimes you gotta be willing to get outside of your comfort zone. And we'll come up with every reason why we can't do something. 
We'll come up with every reason why. Man, I can't sit down that long trap. Man, I can't watch that for that trap. I can't read no book for no 30 minutes a day trap. Well, you comfortable with being where you are. Stop wishful thinking on being wealthy if you ain't willing to put in the work. You got to change for what you want or you got to change what you say you want. Ain't no way around that. Ain't no way around that. You ain't going to never get out of life what you deserve. You'll get out what you negotiate and what you can put in work for. So when I say we're going to go get 100 million, guess what? We put in 100 million, we putting in 200 million worth of work. And I want y'all to come with me. The same way you commit to getting on Instagram, the same way you commit to being on all these shows, the same way you got to commit to yourself, man. Let's go, Dave. All right. The all game is the biggest game. Saudi Arabia, UAE, grab Russian oil products at big discounts, y'all. Watch this. So Russia has been just in an uproar trying to just figure out what to do with their stuff because, you know, they got so many sanctions on them. So, man. Since Western sanctions over the war of Ukraine cut Russia off from a lot of people in the world, yo. So what people don't know is America is the world's largest producer of oil. Right? America is the world's largest producer of oil, but Saudi Arabia is, has the world's largest oil reserves. Feel me? They have the world's largest oil reserves. And so what they're doing now is they're buying oil. Say, that's why I'm not going to lie, yo. Saudi Arabia and UAE, they so clutch. They're like, bro, we not loyal to nobody but building what we got to build. You feel me? Like, y'all can go over and kill each other. Y'all can do all that, bro. We just won't build what we got to build, yo. You feel me? Yes, the United States is the world's largest producer of oil. Go look it up. Go look it up. But the U Saudi Arabia is the largest, has the largest oil reserve. You feel me? So what Saudi Arabia and UAE doing is now, yo, watch this. They're spending, they're buying 100,000 barrels of oil a day from Russia. I think that's going to be something like 36 million barrels of oil at the end of the year. That is crazy. That is ridiculous. But I didn't know... Russia was producing that much oil. But again, it makes you understand why they need to get from under U.S. sanctions so much. Because as long as America got their hand on them like that and they can't and they sanction them in American money, they got to find other ways. They got, yo, we got to come from under these sanctions. So they now selling oil for cheap and Saudi Arabia are like, bad. So I just wanted to put that out there right quick, man. Let's go a little further. All right, so I wanted to talk about this right quick, man. So big tech, uh, they're trying to do something for themselves. So Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta, they're all producing their own chips. They're all producing their own chips in-house. And the name of the game for them is not to knock NVIDIA off because you can't knock NVIDIA off. And it's going to take a long time to try to figure that out. But they all are producing their own chips in-house. So I thought I'd bring that up to y'all thing. All right, let's go a little further. These companies right now, oh, that's a dope graphic, Steve. God dang. I like that. That's good. Um, so these companies right here are set for be the biggest buybacks in the year. Apple at 84 billion, Google at 55 billion, Facebook at 48 billion, Wells Fargo at 17 billion, Bank of America at uh, 15 billion, Lowe's at 15 billion, Visa at 12 billion. Excuse me, I apologize. Amgen at 8 billion, 
um, Bristol Myers at eight billion, Oracle at seven billion, and Cisco at seven billion. These are the people that are buying back their stock to add to shareholder value. Shareholder value. Let's go a little further. I I want to show y'all something right like quick. As we can see, we talked about it all, all earlier. Discretionary. Look at this. O'Reilly's. Watch this, y'all. Auto parts. Auto part discount. Auto part manufacturers. O'Reilly, Auto, uh, AutoZone, and Palti Group all hit new highs today. All hit new highs today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly's, O'Reilly's, Auto Parts. That's right, huh? O'Reilly's, Auto Parts. That wasn't it either? Well, how do I, I can do it one more time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly's Auto Parts. That was it? Gindy, give us a clap for that, man. Give us a clap. <laughs> right? Uh, so, definitely check it out. But also, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Defensive stocks. The Gun Boys, American Shooters, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon Technology. If you've been rocking me for a while, I told y'all about this company a long time ago. LH, LHX and Northam Grooming all was killing it today. America loves shooters. Watch this. Also, the defensive uh, ETF, ITA. I told y'all about that around episode 20. The defensive ETF, it is up 18% in six months. I just want to show y'all how this thing go. You don't necessarily got to be in technology to be a winner. You don't have to be in technology to find winning companies. All right, let's go a little further. I want to show y'all something that I found was real intriguing. So for all my ETF people, so $1,000 in QQQ gives you about $6 a year in dividends. Um, $1,000 in VOO gives you about $16 a year in dividends. $1,000 in DGRO gives you about $25 in dividends. Uh, $1,000 in VYM gives you about $31 in dividends. And the dollar $1,000 in JEPI gives you about $107 in dividends. Now, here's the crazy part. A lot of people would jump on that JEPI. But here's what I want you to understand. That ETF is only about two years old so far. And inside of that ETF, they have stock options. So they sell covered calls in that. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it, but I can't tell y'all what to do. I can't tell y'all what to do. All right, let's go a little further. All right, man, listen, man, the guy, Bernard Arnault, he did something crazy today, man. I mean, the other day, man. He made $12 billion in a day. $12 billion in a day, Bernard Arnault solidifies as the world's richest person. His fortune rises $12 billion in a single day, bringing his net worth to $210 billion, yo. Man, you got to applaud that man, man. Because it's like he ain't giving it back. So first of all, let's just, t let's just think about the idea of making $12 billion in a day. Let's just stop right there. Here's what I want you to understand, though. Here's what I want you to understand, though. He didn't go out and make $12 billion in a day. His stock went up. That's what people don't understand. He didn't go out and make $12 billion in a day. His company ain't produced $12 billion in a day. His stock price went up enough, so his net worth went up $12 billion in a day. Bro, today my net worth went up another $9,000. Because of what I'm doing in the stock market. Today, my net worth went up $9,000. And here's the crazy part about it. No matter what my business did, my net worth went up because my money was working for me. 
Now I know my nine thousand ain't got nothing to do with his twelve billion. But guess what? I got the same blueprint. I got the same blueprint. Let's go a little further there. And here's go. Look, his number one seller. This is crazy. He acquired Hublot in 2008. He acquired Bulgari in 2012. He acquired Christian Dior in 2017. He acquired Tiffany and Company in 2021. The companies that you love, Christian Dior, Fendi, Louis Vuitton, Tiffany and Company. You like Tiffany? Look, look. Tiffany Blue, man, it's signature. Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. So every time y'all go buy a bottle of Hen, just know you made me some money. I ain't make $12 billion a day. That's cool. My $9,000 a day was all right. But guess what? My net work went up. From me not doing nothing but preparing for trapping Tuesday. I ain't go work. I ain't go, man. Man. I'm tired. I ain't pull up to the house, sit in the driveway, turn the radio on, sit down, decompress. I got to go back tomorrow, bro. Man. I ain't did that. I got up today, I watched CNBC, text everybody for the team, thought about getting in my pool, but I realized I needed to take the dolphin out the pool. I said, damn, I gotta take the dolphin out. I don't really feel like, I'm gonna just let the dolphin stand out. Or I could get in with the dolphin in because I got a saltwater pool, and I realized that I had to call a pool. People say, hey, the salt is a little foggy. They said, we'll be out tomorrow, Mr. Howard. And I went back in my movie theater. That's 150 inches. And I watched CNBC. And I watched Bloomberg. And at 4.30, 4 o'clock, when the market closed, guess what? My net worth was up $9,000. And I ain't no smarter than y'all. Y'all can do the same thing, even if you're going to work. Guess what? If you make $9,000 in a day, you make $5,000 in a day. Guess what? Guess what? That's your freedom money. It's not that kind of dolphin, man. It's the dolphin that clean the pool. I see the people in the chat like, Trap, you got a dolphin? I can't let y'all... I can't, oh, Jose, Jose, you was thinking the same thing, bro? Boy, if I had a dolphin in there, boy. Yeah, I was talking about the thing that cleaned the pool by itself, y'all. It's called a dolphin. When I was there, I didn't see a dolphin. Y'all so sad. That's, listen, I'm, 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 I'm the Nah, man, a dolphin is the thing that clean the pool, man, by itself. You just turn it on and it go in the pool, it climb. Now, I'm not going to lie, I saw it for I was crazy. It climbed the wall, it do all the crazy stuff. All right, let's go a little further, man, because Tootie is pissed off back up. All right, man, Southwest is Southwestern again, man. So today they had to shut down planes for a little while, a few hours. Technology went out. The whole company, every flight from Southwest today was shut down from Probably 7 o'clock this morning to about 1 o'clock this evening. All the planes were shut down. All the plane was shut down. They have a thing called SWIFT. It's the system that they're working on. I did their research. They're working on what's called, they're working on what's called the SWIFT system, and the system shuts down. And so because that system, and the man said today, it's about a 50-50 chance of it happening again. It's about a 50-50 chance of it happening again. 
So listen, I don't know if Southwest is a company for you to be tied to if they haven't upgraded the software that keeps their airplanes from being shut down for a whole day or half a day where they had to shut every, I mean, everywhere they go at. There wasn't a Southwest plane in the air from 7 o'clock this morning to about 1 o'clock this evening. It's about a 50, 50 percent chance of it happening again. It just happened in December. All right, let's go a little further. All right, man, now let's enter the 1-800-Trapper hotline. Let's go, y'all. Joy. Yo, what up, though, Trap? So my question is, what is another great what is another valuation model we can use for great fast growing companies who reinvest their uh, free cash back into the company, um, considering that we cannot use the discounted uh, cash flow model um, for any negative free cash flow in the statement? What other model can we use? What's another great model we can use for those type of companies? Do we just go off the 200, the 100 day moving average and price to earnings? Or is there actually like another model out there? that we can use for those type of uh, great companies. Thank you. What's good, what's good, what's good, King? Yep, you can use relative valuation formula or you can use the enterprise valuation formula, 100%. You could use relative value or enterprise value. Let's go to the next one. Hi, Trap, this is El. Aloha, I'm here in Hawaii. Um, wanted to say, Thank you very much for what you do to the community. I am a business school grad, and this is phenomenal information that you share, way better than any courses I've taken. So my question is this, um, the VIX is under 17, and you mentioned that when the VIX is around 17 to 19, you would do an options play for DraftKings. So I was wondering, are you going to do that, or have you decided to do a buy and hold with DraftKings? And if it's a buy and hold, I can't do the, um, the intrinsic value using the triple beam because it doesn't have enough historical data. So do you use then the enterprise to do that kind of research, the enterprise formula? And then also for options, I took your options course and I don't know how to get in on an options play with DraftKings because once again, it's a new company and it doesn't have a whole lot of data. So I'd like to get your information on how you go about analyzing that kind of businesses um, and how I can go about making a better um, evaluation on pricing. Thanks so much, Trap. Blessings, blessings, Queen. She always, me and her always messaging in the masses of the triple beam. So one, the VIX is 100% under 17 it was actually 16.71 today, and we haven't seen a VIX that low since 2021. And it's crazy that we're seeing a VIX like that, right? Uh, so I am not going to do a play on DraftKings. Um, I have four option plays in right now. Um, I want to watch and see how this XLE option is going to go for me over the next week or two. Um, so I will not go with that. Use the enterprise value formula that I told the king about before you. That will help you. Um, the enterprise value formula will help you for sure. Use that if you don't. If you're not in Trappers Anonymous, or is it also inside of the Wall Street trapping course? So Trappers Anonymous or the Wall Street trapping course. Use the enterprise value because it doesn't deal with free cash flow. It mostly deals with total debt, long-term debt. So that'll be good for you. Uh, so that's what I have to say about that enterprise volume. No buy and hold on DraftKings. No option play on DraftKings. And I know that queen have made some money because she's actually in, I think, three of those option plays with me. And she's got a couple of those buy and holds. That is the privilege, purpose of being in... Listen, if you if you buy something that I have and you're in the triple beam team, 
I have no option but to answer your question about what it is that I got. I got to explain it to you. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I do not have, I will not get the DraftKings play. Sometimes I'd be excited, but until you see me press the button, it ain't a play being made. So I hope I answered your question for you, Queen. I definitely need to go to Hawaii, bro. Definitely want to go to Hawaii. Next call. Salute to you, King. So my quick question is, how much do you think naked shorts affect share prices? And how much do you think naked shorts affect the overall market? Shorts. Share. Naked. Shorts. Overall. Play that video again so I can hear it. Salute to you, King. So my quick question is, how much do you think naked shorts affect share prices? And how much do you think naked shorts affect the overall market? Ah. So shorts 100% affect the market. And in case of people don't understand, it's just going against the grain. Um, that's what actually puts us in those bear market territories when we have more sellers and more shorters. Exactly. That's what happened with... Um, the actual market earlier when um you remember when what's the what's the thing reddit remember when reddit there's they put one bank out of business because they shorted the market so much all of those people were shorting the market and they were putting puts against the market so betting against it so they affect the market but it has to be a lot like billions of dollars so remember the game is about buyers and sellers king so anytime you have more buyers, and a lot of times those sellers are not just people selling, there's people also on the short side of that. So 100% it does affect the market, but it's about abundance of how many shorters you have. Great question, King. Let's go. I sounded like a whale just not drinking that. Sheesh. All right, man, so this segment is called... Breaking down a brick. Y'all know this is my idea of helping y'all break down a company that I can understand so that you can understand it so we can get in the market. This week's company is, drum roll please, United Health Group, man. United Health Group is a company that provides health coverage, Medicare plans, short-term health care insurance, and Medicare plans for individuals and families. Healthcare management and global health solutions for employers. Healthcare network, value-based care, and... Clinician, that's a good word, resources for physicians and healthcare professionals. Let's dig in a little deeper. So, as of right now, the company is trapping. Revenue has grown year over year for the last five years. They trapping. Net income has grown year over year for the last five years. They trapping. Cash flow from operations has grown over the last five years. They are trapping. Free cash flow is positive for the last five years. They trapping. Gross margin is consistent, they're trapping. Earnings growth per share for the last five years is growing, they are trapping. Let's go a little further. So, uh, return on equity is anywhere between 11 to 15%. They're good. Year over year for the last five years, they've been growing. Their return on equity is 23.6%. And their return on invested capital is 9.78%. We love that about United Healthcare Group. Let's go a little further. Uh, the current ratio could be a little better. That's their. The current ratio is the working capital, which is current assets and current liabilities. Uh, debt to equity ratio is one to eight. Check meaning they got more cash and debt. EBITDA interest coverage ratio means they can cover that. Check and servicing their debt is good. That's a check. We like that. Go a little further. Income and net revenue has grown, increased year over year, 18% and 12%. That's good. Go a little further. But I love the free cash flow. It's increased 20%, 23% over the last 23 years, year over year. We like that. Let's go a little further. And what I like the most is looking at quality earnings, gross profit, growing profit margin is growing. The earnings quality is good. Uh, the earnings trend is up. 
uh, accelerated growth. I love that. I told y'all we love healthcare for sure. Earnings versus the industry is good. They have great earnings compared to their industry, and they have high return on equity. We like that. Historical annual growth is at 11%. That is great for a healthcare company of that nature. They have a P.E. ratio of about 22.8, which is relatively good compared to Centrine and Humana. Um, I definitely think uh, United Healthcare is a strong, strong company. If you're in Masters of the Triple Beam, the lottery pick, or Triple Beam team, you will get that price. Uh, I'll give it to you tomorrow. I'll give it to you tomorrow. All right, let's go a little further. So this one is good, y'all. Our Certified Trapper of the Week. This one is good. Our Certified Trapper of the Week, drum roll please, is none other than Nicole Lynn. Listen, if you know Nicole Lynn, tell her that Trap used this beautiful queen as our Certified Trapper of the Week. She did something phenomenal. But let's get into who she is first. So she is a sports agent for Clutch Sports, which I think is under LeBron, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Nicole Lynn is an American sports agent. She is the first black woman to represent a National Football League draft pick. She serves as the president of football operations for Clutch Sports, along with many other accomplishments. But what she did was phenomenal. She just negotiated the biggest contract in the NFL history. She just got Jalen Hurts five years, $255 million. That queen went crazy. That queen went crazy. Making him the highest, not only, not only did she do it, but she made him the highest paid player in NFL history. So let's just think about this right quick. And I'm going to just be, I'm going to set trip right quick. You can call me racist all you want. A black woman just went and got a black man $255 million as an extension. Man, shout out to Nicole. And I'm cool enough to say that I have DM'd her a couple times, not on no funny stuff, a while back asking her about law representation. Because I was like, yo, I need, I need a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Before we got L, so she was like, oh, I got a couple people that might, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because I was like, I knew where I was growing at. And I was like, yo, I need representation. Like, I need to be, I need to make sure nobody ain't swinging no contract the wrong way for me. You feel me? So... If you know Nicole Lynn, matter of fact, this has to be a clip, dog. I want this queen to know that we are honoring her on Trap and Tuesday. This beautiful married black woman. This beautiful married black woman. Got to say married because they'll start, Trap trying to shoot his shot. No, the hell I'm not. So let's put married out there. You know what I'm saying? But we definitely want to salute her for that, man. Being able to go get, you know, just being a woman in the game. Um, and, and not only just being a woman in the game, but just being a black woman in the game, in a male-dominated. And she went got that man 255, y'all. That means she had to go to the table on some. What are we talking about here, bro? And shout out to Jalen Hurts for being bold enough to hire a black woman to represent him. You know what I'm saying? So let's get that queen her flowers. I don't care what happened after this because, you know, the NFL all about breaking records. But just know you going in the history books, queen. You did. And just know here at Trapping Tuesday, we got you down. We got you documenting. You with the greats. So salute to that queen. All right, man, let's go a little further. 
Larry June, bro, you are making a goddamn. You can be, I'm about to get him here. He being a regular, yo. But here's why, because he be spitting that's tough. All right, so we going to well track, man. Let's go, man. Well track is Larry June says, how you gonna say you a how you gonna say you a boss if you don't handle biz? Real men stay on ten, take care of their kids. Your boy's talking too much. It's time to show them. I did shows around the globe, never took a cent. They might have went over your head. It's been thinking different. But I wanted to go a little further. What he said, he said, uh, I got a, he said, I got a hundred mil. Wait up, it's in my phone. I ain't get the whole thing. That's my bad, y'all. I ain't get the whole thing. It's in my phone. Wait, where is that? Right. Right here. He said, uh, I bought real estate, and after he said it, he said, I be thinking different. I bought real estate before I went and bought a bent. I had, I had suntan toes when you was in your feelings. I ain't need a record deal to touch my first million. Spending money on assets for rainy days, I'm more focused on ownership, you not on the fame. And I like that. Here's why I like that. I bought real estate before I bought a Bentley. I bought real estate before I bought a Bentley. That's a whole different thought process. Then he come back and he said, I ain't need a record deal before I touch my first meal. Spending money on assets for rainy days. Spending money on assets for rainy days. Watch this. I'm more focused on ownership, not the fame. I just want to say something right quick. I want you to focus more on ownership than you focus on anything else. We talk about Bernard Arnault increasing his net worth by $12 billion in a day. It's because his ownership in those companies increased through the value of stocks. And because the stocks went up, his ownership went up. I want you to understand that while everybody else focusing on being famous and everybody else focuses on looking like being rich, I want you to work on actually being rich. I want you to actually focus on building wealth. I want you to actually focus on attaining the assets. Because in a world full of people that say they want to be rich, we live in a world full of people who actually think they have to prove that they're rich. I promise y'all, yo, I love wearing this Apple Watch. I love wearing this Wall Street looks like us now apparel. I love chilling in my crib. Because I'm at a point in my life where I don't got to show nobody nothing. Let's just roll into the wild world from the OG. I'm at a point in my life where I don't got to prove nobody nothing. I want you to understand that what's next in your life going to take more than you. Building wealth isn't truly an individual sport. It's of collective value. The more people with you, the greater the return. I say the more people with you, the greater the return. Because as long as you're going by yourself, who are you going to bring with you? As long as you're going by yourself, what's the blueprint? As long as you're by yourself, who are you going to have fun with? As long as you're doing it alone, how many lessons you got to learn the hallway? Aren't you tired of learning the hallway? Aren't you tired of being alone? Aren't you tired of saying... I don't got nobody to rock with. We got to learn that it's a collective effort that helps us speed up the process. It's in being able to go through it and get the information and having somebody to bounce ideas off. 
because when you get the information and you don't have nobody to bounce the ideas off, what happens is you burn yourself out. And then what happens is the reward or the return on the hard work isn't the same. We're talking about diminishing what? Returns. We talking about you putting in all this effort and you look around and you like, damn, I, I did that by myself. Then the hard work don't seem worth it no more. Every time I look at my daughter, it make the hard work worth it. Every time I look at my, I just told my cousin today, I said, bro, we got to be in alignment so that when we get to the top, we can celebrate the victory together. I want us to understand the importance of recalibrating our relationship skills. I want us to understand the importance of recalibrating our relationship scale. We got to refine some truths that we are living by. We got to redefine some of the principles that we call uh, these are day one rules and I'm built like this. We got to redefine some of those things. We got to be rewired. We got to upgrade the software. Because the software that we've been working on, the software that we've been using for so long, it's outdated. That software worked when you was in survival mode. It don't work in thrive mode. You holding on them insecurities and they don't belong right here. You don't want to get an accountant because you keep saying, I don't want nobody else to count my money. You're not going to get there alone, fam. You're not going to get there alone. It's okay to say you need some help. It's okay to say you need some guidance. It's okay to humble yourself to ask somebody to help you. It's okay. It's okay. Because that's what wealthy people love to do. And I'm going to just keep it real with you. Wealthy people love sharing information. But they're not going to waste the information. So wealthy people understand that if I get in a room with other wealthy people, it's not about telling them how much money we make. You wouldn't be in this room if you ain't made a certain amount of money or if you ain't connected to somebody that's making a certain kind of money. So you go in a room full of wealthy people, they just want to talk about tips, tricks, cheat codes, loopholes, blueprints, VC, investments, businesses, protection of the assets. That's what they want to talk about. They don't care if you made a couple million dollars. That's it? They don't care if you made a hundred million dollars. That's it? Problem is, you keep trying to tell people how much money you made. How much money you didn't make. I keep going around trying to tell people how much I don't know. I keep going in rooms while I'm the person with the least amount of information. But I got enough value to add to any conversation that I get in. I need you to understand something, fam. Nobody cares about the Rolex, man. Nobody cares about the Bentley, man. Nobody cares about the clothes you got on, man. Nobody don't care about that, man. I don't care about that, man. What are you doing for your family? Because guess what? When you die, nobody don't want that Fendi. When you die, nobody don't care about them shoes. Your kids might look at it and say, this is my mama had, this is my daddy's, and they might look at it and think about memories, but you ain't put them in no position to win. I remember I was watching Black Panther, man, and I remember he said something. He said a father's job is to prepare his kids to succeed after he's gone. I hold that to my heart. I said, damn, that's different. 
said a father's job is to prepare his kids to succeed after he's gone. Let me ask you a question, fathers. Are you preparing your seeds to live a life of abundance, of prosperity, of wealth after you're gone? Mothers, are you teaching your daughters how to be what they need to be after you're gone? And if not, then you created another generation that's no better than you. You created another generation that won't exceed anything you've already done. Your floor is their floor. They ain't going nowhere. You know how they say your ceiling is supposed to be their floor? Well, your floor is where they go. They ain't even get to your ceiling because you ain't put them nowhere. They stop it right on the same floor you on. What we doing? What we doing? And if you're a grandparent already, are you teaching your grandkids something that you didn't teach your children? If you are auntie or uncle, are you teaching your nieces and nephews something that you ain't had? Are you having conversation with their mother and father? See, I keep telling y'all right now, it ain't about an individual game. Building wealth is a team sport. It is a collective value, meaning the more people involved in the process, the better the network is, the stronger the blueprint is. I want my daughter to see it. I want my daughter mama to see it. I want my homies in the streets to see it. I want my cousins to see it. I want them to see it. Because I want them to touch it. I want them to know it's real. I ain't just talking. I want them to see me busting my ass building this. That way when they come be a part of it, they know the work is going to take to sustain it. I'm on a 20-year run, y'all. I'm on a 20-year run. That means I see what I'm about to do for the next 20 years, and it's build out a media company. And I ain't just talking about being on YouTube. I ain't just talking about having an audio experience on a podcast. I'm talking about Tyler Perry, media. This is just the beginning. And I ain't in a race with nobody. Because I got my own blueprint. Do you got a blueprint? Do you got a blueprint? There's a difference between the person that get up every day and say, well, I'm going to see what's going on today. I'm going to let life just life the day. And there's a difference from the person that get up with intention to execute and knock out something on their list to take the plan to another level. Diminishing returns. Once you put in the work, once you put in the work, what is the reward that it gives birth to? And if the reward that it gives birth to doesn't match the effort, then that return wasn't worth the work. We're talking about diminishing returns, y'all. Diminishing returns, y'all. And I want y'all to hold that one this week. What is my blueprint? What is my blueprint? What is my blueprint. Shabor to Wash You Trapper. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another episode of Trapping Tools. We are now bringing it to the end. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Episode 38, 39 was so amazing. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all like, make sure y'all subscribe, make sure y'all share this amazing episode. If you want to join, definitely Jose putting the links in. 
for the Patreon, for Trap, for Trappers Anonymous, for, for, for the merch, for the apparel. And guess what, y'all? Next week is a live show. Ooh. Next week is a live show, man. Yee! I'm bringing out the big 40. Hey, man, listen, man. Make sure you all, please do me a favor. Make sure you all subscribe. Jose, let's put the Apple podcast in there. We got 2,300 people in here. If you're an Apple person, if you're on the Apple, make sure you click the link and subscribe to it. Download as many episodes as you can and leave a review. If you're not on Apple, man, look, go to Spotify, go to Google Play. We love you the most, but the Apple Charles is just our with Charles. We part of the Apple ecosystem, y'all. You know, so do that for us, man. It definitely helps us stay in the top 200 of overall podcasts in the world. It actually helps us grow in the investing in business podcast space for sure. The more you help us grow, the more we're going to keep bringing y'all more and more smoke, man. It's your boy, the Wall Street Travel. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all next week.